Gary Stewart here with Floor Construction Pros and Trimble with Jim McCartney. Uh, Jim, I, I think it's interesting that Trimble has sort of uh, coined this phrase, BIM, BIM to Field. And uh, I wanted to talk, uh, have you show us a little bit about what that means and how this equipment uh, facilitates contractors taking BIM into the field and getting the maximum benefit out of it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Larry. Thank you. So we've seen a great trend toward BIM and the use of virtual design and construction over the last few years. And really what we're seeing is that most contractors want to be able to take these BIM models to the field. Unfortunately, technology hasn't been able to do that really until recently with Trimble Field Link. So what I'll do today is show you a brief demonstration of how we would take the model into this device, lay out some points in the field, view the 3D model in Trimble Field Link, and then actually produce some reports that tell us our productivity and also if we have any field issues in the field. Okay? All right. Great. So the first thing I want to show is we're in the layout mode right now. Our biggest concern right now is that we get our points close to where they need to be within the tolerance the contractor, contractor expects. The beauty of the Trimble Field Link display is that it's very easy to read and it's in contractor terms. As you note here, we can move between the model and the map view. So in the map view, we're seeing that we're actually very close to the point, but we don't have a very good detail. So we move back to the uh, detailed view and it now shows us that we're within one inch of the point. If we need to move it just slightly to get in closer, we can certainly do that and we can move it to where we get within a half or a quarter of an inch. And once we've done that, we now have the opportunity to actually stake that point. When we stake the point, what we're doing is we're recording the positions and we're comparing it to the design intent. If we're within the tolerance, we're very happy and we can send it back to the data model. If we're not in tolerance, we can also send it back to Tecla Structures and we can do a deviation analysis to understand the difference between design and actual. So it's very powerful for the contractors to understand whether they've done it properly, and if not, what's the problem and where's the issue. Okay? So once we've staked the point, we may want to actually go in and view a 3D model to recognize how that looks in the field. The, uh, the beauty of a 3D model is that the user has the ability to view it in three dimensions, orbit, pan, and navigate through the model at his desire. So we're going to bring in a 3D model to look at. And we do that very simply by going into our import routine, selecting it just like you would in a PC, and we'll import it. Once that model comes in, we can then go to the model viewer, and we can view that model in either a 2D or a 3D approach. As you see it right now, it's in a 2D mode. But if we want to look at it in 3D, we simply move to our orbits, orbit navigation tool and you can see as we move this around you can see that it's in 3D. So we're also seeing the points that we created, we're seeing the uh, detail of the walls and all of the anchor bolts and we can zoom in to certain areas to see rebar, all of the different detail inside the building. So for a field crew this is great because they get all of the design intent and they have a visualization tool to understand what they're building rather than just a 2D plan. We can also make it in shade mode, which makes it a little bit easier to view. We can change the background colors as well if we have lighting conditions that require us to change it. So they're really seeing what the designer's intent here is for the project that they're working on. Absolutely. Rather than just a 2D blueprint, they get the actual 3D view of it. Mm -hmm. And really the key here, it seems to me, is that that model's not actually loaded on this device. You're, you're pulling it down from the, the original design. That's correct. It's coming directly out of the Tecla Structures model, mm -hmm. which is the actual design intent, and it's made to be constructible as well as fabricatable. So mm -hmm. we actually have the, uh, the data that comes right from the design model. Right. Yeah. And as the project's going on, any variation from that design starts showing up in this mod in, in, on, on this screen yeah. so that, it, that as you're, when you're in the field, if something comes up and it's a surprise, you know whether or not that's been looked at and approved? Yeah, is that right? absolutely. So the beauty of it is we, if we have to make a change in the field, we can report it here, we can send it back to the model, and the project engineers or the project managers have the ability to make an analysis of that and determine whether or not there's an issue worthy of actually correcting or if it's, if it's uh, insignificant enough to continue with the project. All right. Yeah. 
One other thing here I think is important, and we just talked about the potential to have changes on the job or potentially conflicts or issues that arise. We really want to be able to, to report those back to the appropriate people as quickly and easily as possible. So we have a report in here called a field report. And that allows us to actually come in and type in the name of the report that we want to create. So in this case, we may want to call it test. And we can also type in text. So if we have, for example, an anchor bolt issue where somebody's placed an anchor bolt improperly or there's a conflict with some other trade and we want to report that, we can type in the text for that. Because this device also has a camera embedded in it, we can take a photograph of it. So we can actually communicate very easily what the issue is. So what we're seeing here is just simply the back of this device, yeah. but I can snap the photograph. I can then include a position using the robotic total station to measure lo the location of the issue. It will embed it in the report. And then when we hit save, it produces a PDF document in this device, and as you can see here, all of the data that I created is included on the report, including the picture. Because it's Wi-Fi capable, we could launch an a, a, uh, email uh, client or some sort of a uh, email application, attach this report, and send it back immediately to the office. Okay, I see. Yeah. So is, is there a cellular capability to transmit data with this device, or is it all Wi-Fi? Yeah, so this device uses exclusively Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and with the uh, proliferation of hotspots and the ability to use 4G devices and things like that, you can certainly do it with this device sure, as well. set up your own hotspot. Yeah, exactly, okay. yeah. Interesting. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate yeah. you uh, walking through it with us, uh, and we'll look forward to seeing an Allen Project sites real soon. Excellent. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate it.